Yo, what is up you guys, Vin Tran here as always, and today I'm taking you guys behind the scenes of a recent school project that I did that's kind of just a fun interview setup, so let's break it down. All right, so we had two cameras on this shoot. This was the 1DX Mark III shooting 24 frames per second, shutter speed at 1 50th at a 1.4 aperture and ISO 100. We have the beautiful red camera that is shooting 5K on the Dragon sensor with the Sigma 50 millimeter. On here we have the 20 millimeter right now. So that way we have two different focal lengths. We have a wide and a tight to cut to. And the red is on the beautiful Dana Dolly. This is my new favorite piece of equipment so that we get those nice parallax shots going on. All right, so on the red, we had the battery belt clip, just this V-mount right here. We're running into DC power, so that way, whenever we're running the red, it doesn't power it off of this small battery. That only lasts about 45 to an hour, whereas these bigger batteries will last us anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. And so, speaking about the Dana Dolly, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but basically it's a big camera platform on skateboard wheels and some aluminum piping from Home Depot on some fancy, tiny C-stands. Talking about the scene and how everything looked, however, um, we're gonna break down the lighting now. So in this corner back, well, actually, let's start with the window first. All right, so on here, we actually cheated the system a little bit. So if you look over here, we closed this blind because this window is massive. So we actually have an ND6 film on here and, oh God, all right, keep it rolling. We're just, we're rolling with it. All right. We have an ND6 gel on here that we put behind the blinds to cut down the exposure because outside is very bright right now. We're shooting around 1, um, 1 2 p.m.-ish, I can't remember the time. So this is cutting down the exposure, that way we can keep these blinds open and make it have more of a life-like feel. Technically speaking, you want to cut these ND gels out to fit just the window pane. Um, but I made a creative decision to just say I had black windows this whole time. All right, so back here we have this lamp from not lamp. All right, so back here we have this beautiful plant from Hobby Lobby, got it this morning. And back here and around the scenes, we're just gonna, just gonna, all right, just stay. So back here we have these beautiful lights. These are um, tube lights. Now these are only bicolor, so we can do like a warm tungsten, a cool daylight, and something kind of in the middle. But these are my new favorite lights. They have their own weighted base stand, so they'll stay upright. And so I like using these as accents. Um, they're on Amazon, they're about $100. Link in the description to the latest review that I just made about that. All right, plant, you're just gonna, all right. All right, so back here, you guys see this blue light. We'll cut to B-roll in a second. Um, we have the Nanlite Pavo tubes. Now these lights are awesome because they are RGBW and they're also bicolor. So we can do HSI, we can make it blue, we can make it um, daylight or tungsten like all the other lights. And then we'll move over. We have another one of these tube lights. I have about four of them in the office now. Don't know why, they just really look cool to me. And we'll cut to B-roll, especially with this in particular. Um, we'll cut to the shot before and after we put this light on here, is that in the side shot, the tight shot, we saw that there is a C-stand in the back. So I decided to put this skinny light here and make it look like it's actually the light that's in the frame and not a C-stand. So that's kind of a way to cheat it. All right, so above me right here, we have a grid on a softbox, but this is actually a 24 by 36 softbox by Glow Easy off of Amazon. It's about $60, great diffuser. We also have the diffusion sheet on it. And essentially what this honeycomb or what a grid is what I use, the term I use. This is making sure that the light spill of this softbox is directly on the subject and not on the rest of the scene. You'll see that our key light also has that same grid on it. The light that's powering this is the Aperture Amaran 200X. So it's a bicolor LED light. It's not like the light storm lights, however, so we do have to have AC power. It's just plugged in behind the couch here. And uh, we'll have cameraman point pan over there. So this is also a Glow Easy dome. This is the 36 inch dome. I'll come, I'll come over. I'm just gonna, okay, I'm just gonna, gonna okay. <laughs> so this is a 38 inch light dome. So this is a parabolic softbox is what the correct term is called. 
And so this is acting as our key light. It is also being powered by another Amaran 200X. Both of them are set to 5600 Kelvin to match the daylight that's coming in through the window behind us. And these are just on my black C stands, like I said. All right, so above us and right over here by the camera, we had these Harbor Freight moving pads, but these work great for killing the acoustics. So in my apartment, we have like 16, 14 foot ceilings with almost no acoustic treatment on it. So we wanted to kind of build a cave around where we were filming to dam then dampen the echo. Obviously, ideally, I'd want to get some bass traps, some actual acoustic panels in here. But for about $12 um, for one of these blankets, it's a great way to just kill some sound. And um, I always keep them wherever I go on a film set and um, they have been working great. All right, so filming audio without getting it scratchy, we're using the Sennheiser G4 wireless systems with the MKE2 lav mics. These are omnidirectional. They're Sennheiser's best and flagship labs. And that is being plugged up over here. We're using the Zoom H6 with just it, the receiver being plugged in through XLR. So over here we have Karen. She is our TV on wheels, just like um, Plankton's wife. Um, she is currently um, trying to form a union, so she's on strike right now. And then we have her husband that she's been cheating on Plankton with, and he is plugged up to the beautiful red camera through HDMI. Both of these are, I guess, through HDMI. And the point of this is that um, while the clients and the talents are being filmed, I can visually see the A camera, which was right here. I can turn this over. I was in this corner. Keep an eye on the second camera. I, of course, I have the seven inch touchscreen monitor of the red, but I also can see it on this big screen. Now, practicality, kind of overkill for the situation we're doing right now. But in the field, I do like having Karen because I can send all the feeds to the cameras to this TV and have the client, the person that's hiring me to film the videos, um, sitting there watching it and giving me notes live. And of course, all of this can be said that this is kind of overkill for all of a student production. However, I'm, I'm overkill, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty overkill. Everyone that works with me will know that I am very overkill, so. All right, so that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys like this little BTS walk gear breakdown, what you may call it of the shoot that I just finished wrapping. We're gonna show the film right after this so that you guys can see how it all looks after post. But as always, I'll catch you guys next time. Hey everyone, my name is Thomas Parmiter. I am the CEO at Tommy P Digital. Tommy P Digital started in 2016 as a real estate photography company. I was actually working for my dad and wanted to make a commercial work out of it. So I started doing contract work for him. Over the years, it's kind of transformed more into an actual company. I do photography, videography. I work with sororities, breweries, bars, really just about anyone that wants to have content work created for them. I am a portrait photographer, but I work with nature and food and drinks and other things like that. Some of my favorite collaborative projects that I've worked on is with Syncast Productions. Those guys are great. I've worked with them for a variety of weddings and sorority shoots as well. And you know, we work really well together. So it's been a good time. Yeah, so when I was a when I was 16, I got my first camera and you know, we all take photos on our, on our phones and we all take photos, you know, with like Polaroids and stuff. But I really wanted to get in depth with the craft. So I started to work really in depth with photography and I got, you know, I found a passion for it. You know, I, I grew to love framing and color correction and working with people. Communication's a big part of this all and, and I love people. I love being around people and, and learning stories of people and I think some of the best stories I've heard were on shoots where and I'm talking to the client and they're just telling me about their life and you know, it's super interesting to meet new people and get to know new people and make new friends. I, some of you know, my closest friends were just photo shoots that ended with you know, people actually getting a lot closer with each other. So it was cool. You know, I, I'm really good friends with Vin Tran, who is the CEO of Syncast Productions and him and I have worked closely together and we actually met in college and did some shoots together and now we're you know, making stuff all the time and, and hanging out. So, you know, not only has Tommy P Digital brought me, you know, joy in showing me I have a passion for something, but it's also created friendships along the way. And I think that's kind of what it's about is the journey. You know, it wasn't easy and it hasn't been easy and it's still not easy. You know, we're still working hard to grow and get bigger and get more clients and work harder. But overall, I mean, it's really been fun. So one of the mottos that has actually stuck with me throughout the years is seek discomfort. Um, 
Yes Theory is a big company uh, uh, that has really shown me that it's okay to chase your dreams. And so I try to seek discomfort in everything I do and you know, creating this business and chasing this passion, it's definitely out of my comfort zone. It's definitely been a learning process and the entire time it's been a lot of fun. Uh, but seeking discomfort, it stuck with me. I try to do things every day, whether it be with my company or with my real life, that it's like I'm getting out of my comfort zone. I'm doing something that is gonna better me and grow me as a person. And I think that that's really stuck with me, not only you know in my real life, but with my passion because you know I'm chasing a career in photography and videography and that's, you know, can be scary, but that's okay because I'm growing and I'm learning and it's only making me a better person. So seeking discomfort's really stuck with me and helped me learn and grow and overall just improve. If you want to schedule a shoot with me or talk about doing some video work, you can find me on Instagram. My ad's going to be at Tommy P Digital. There you can DM me and I'm happy to kind of talk about prices or figure some stuff out.